All right, section 4.6 is the last section of material in chapter 4. It is not the last time that most of you will integrate, however, because in Calc 2, you get lots more methods of integration. But this is the only method of integration um, that we're going to discuss beyond what we've done already um, this semester. So this is called integration by substitution. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to consider taking the function y equals sine of x cubed minus 4x, and I want you to do something for me and to take the derivative. So everybody write in there what the derivative is of that. Not the antiderivative, the derivative. All right, so somebody willing to share with me what in the world did you get for the derivative of sine of x cubed minus 4x? 3x squared minus 4 Okay, so that's, what, what rule are you using just to make sure everybody's on the same page? Um, that's part of it. What else? Somebody said it. Trig. There's some trig in here. Oh, I didn't see the sign. Ah, there's a sign in there, too, so we've got some trig. Uh, addition Okay, there's addition and subtraction. It's a chain rule. That's what I've been aching for someone to say. Yes, Annika, it is a chain rule. There is an inside and an outside function, right? There's a chain rule on this one, okay? So whether you do the inside first or the outside first, you do have a chain rule. So one part of it is the 3x squared minus 4. The other part of it is that the derivative of sine is cosine. So you've got the cosine of x cubed minus 4x. So all of that is the derivative of where we began, correct? Okay. What we're going to do in this, in this section is we're going to consider going in reverse. That is, we're going to start with functions that look a lot more like this, and we're going to try to go backwards to get the function that started out looking like the sine of x cubed minus 4, 4x. Sorry. Okay, so if you were to do this in reverse, that is, we're taking the integral now of 3x squared minus 4 times the cosine of x cubed minus 4x, what this should give me is it should give me where I originally started. That is, my answer should be the sine of x cubed minus 4x, and we're going to get plus c, just like before. Sorry, there's a dx missing on that, but... We're going to get that plus C that may or may not have a value of zero depending on what we're working with, but that's, that's where we're going to be heading. So we're starting with things that look like this complicated mess, and they're actually becoming something that looks more condensed when we get going. So here's the idea of how we do that. One option when we're presented with a function, <coughs> sorry, presented with finding a function that looks like, the, like a product, okay, so something that looks like a product is to decide if there is a composite function present for which the inside function's derivative is one of the factors being multiplied. So back over here, you notice that this looks like a product, right, the part that's sort of boxed in in purple. And the inside function here, the thing that's inside of cosine, has a derivative out here that is, that is the other piece. So yes, it's a product, but the part that's being multiplied is actually the derivative of what's inside. Do you guys see that when you're looking at that piece? So if you consider the y prime above, the x cubed minus 4x is the inside function, and its derivative, 3x squared minus 4, is one of the factors being multiplied. So what we're going to do is we're going to let the inside function be what we call u. I added a 4 here that wasn't supposed to be there, sorry. x cubed minus 4x, and then <coughs> we take the derivative. Now, there's a reason I'm going to write this this way, and just pause for me for a moment so you can see why, but the du dx, that is the derivative of u with respect to x, would be the 3x squared minus 4 that you guys saw a moment ago. But the way that we normally write that is we normally write that with the dx multiplied to the other side. So it ends up looking like du equals 3x squared minus 4 dx. So as we work through this, that's the way that I'm going to be writing mine because of the substitution that we're going to be making. So let me show you how this actually works in terms of our problem. So let's say then that we have the integral of the 3x squared minus 4 
times the cosine of x cubed minus 4x dx. That's, that's how the problem began, okay? And we recognize, oh my goodness, well, there is something inside of something else. The inside part is the x cubed minus 4x. And I notice that if I take the derivative of that, I get 3x squared minus 4 dx. And this is here. There's a 3x squared minus 4, and there's a dx. So the next step in substitution is replacing those pieces. We're substituting. The parts that are underlined in red are equivalent to du. So they get replaced with du, which we usually write at the end. And then the part right here still has a cosine, but the x cubed minus 4x is what we have called u. So this is the cosine of u du. So we are substituting the complicated expression x cubed minus 4x, and we're replacing that with the simpler expression u. What is the antiderivative of cosine of u? Negative sine. Close. It's positive. Sine of u plus c. Right? Now, this isn't my final answer, however. If the problem starts out with x's, the problem needs to end with an answer that's got x in it. So my last step is to do what you would have called somewhere along the way something like back substituting. You're substituting back in where you began. So the u value is what goes in here. That's, I'm sorry, the replacement of what u is goes in here, which is the x cubed minus 4x. And then we have the plus c. Which is where we anticipated ending when we first sort of looked at this, because that's where we began. We began with a sign of x cubed minus 4x. So that's where this is all coming from. Let me show you an actual example from the front side instead of sort of working backwards into where we were getting. And I think it'll all sort of piece together as we do this. So take a look at what we've got here. It looks like a product, agreed? I've got a piece with a cube root and I've got a piece outside of that that's, a, that's multiplying by negative 8x. This looks like a product. So that's going to be one of the keys for you is that if it looks like a product, you may have u substitution for this semester anyway. Next semester, or you may have other options. But right now, it's the only option you have. If it looks like a product, you've got to have u substitution. So what you want to do is you want to identify the piece that looks like it's inside of something else. And what is that piece? Yeah, it's the 3 minus the 4x squared. It's inside or underneath of a radical. So what we're going to do is we're going to write down that the u value is the 3 minus 4x squared. And then we're going to take the derivative of that value. So what is the derivative of 3 minus 4x squared? Negative 8x dx. And all of that is right here. So as we're doing our replacement, our substitution, this piece of it gets replaced by du. The first part is still the cube root of x, which might be actually more helpful to write as x to the 1 third, right? Yep, yeah, and it's u, you're right. And so it's u to the 1 third. Sorry, I was referring to the fact that it's to a power 1 third. Do cube root's a power. Yep, yep, we're not done yet, yes. And then we integrate, because this actually looks like a form that we know an integral for. U to the one third. What is the antiderivative of u to the one third? Three fourths u to the four thirds. Or you could write u to the four thirds divided by four thirds. And then I need a plus c. plus c. But the problem started out with x's, so it needs to end with x's. It also started out in radical form, which means that when we end the problem, I want it to be in that same form that it began. So we're going to put it in radical form, and we're going to put it back with x's involved. So let me do the radical form first, just because it's, it's the simplest um, to see at this point. So the cube root part is, is going to be the, the power of the third part. So this is u to the 4 plus c. <coughs> and then from there, I can actually put back in what u is. So u is 3 minus 4x squared to the power 4 plus c. And I'm fine with you leaving it like that. I don't need you to simplify the power 4 and the power 
this the cube root. I'm okay with this being left in this form. If you want to take it one step further, you could, but this would be fine. So it started out with x's, it ends with x's. It started out with radicals, it ends with radicals. Any questions on that one? Okay. Let's take a look at another one. <coughs> this one doesn't look like a product. It looks like a, a quotient, all right? Um, if it helps you to think about it, you could write it as though it looked like a product. Some of you are getting really good at doing that. Um, and so it, it could look like this. And in fact, might be more helpful to look like this later on. We'll see. Not either way you do it, no matter which one, you still have the same value for you. What looks like it's inside of something else? Yeah, 1 plus the x to the 4th. That is what looks like it's inside of something else. So that's my u value. And that's exactly what I want my u value to be, because what would du be? 4x cubed. And then dx. Now, that's not exactly what I have, but it's close, right? What's different about this than what I've actually got in my problem? The 4. It's multiplied by 4. So what do we do with that? Well. There's a couple of ways to think about that. This is my favorite way to think about it. I really just want to replace this piece from up in here, right? So I'm just going to divide the 4 to the other side, or in essence, multiply by 1 fourth. So I'm going to write this. This is 1 fourth du. It's equal to x cubed dx. So when I replace the x cubed dx, I replace it with 1 fourth du, because I've just divided the number 4 to the other side. So the part that I've underlined up here in this sort of dark blue color will be replaced. It will be replaced with a 1 fourth, which I can write in front if I want, and the du, which I tend to write in the back of the problem. This is so getting in the way. Let's move that over there. All righty, so the pieces that had the x cubed and the dx in it are gone. The 1 plus x to the fourth, this piece right here, gets replaced with u, which still then has a power of negative 2. Now we had a property that says that this 1 fourth could be brought to the front because it doesn't actually affect the integration, so we just carry it along. What is the antiderivative of u to the negative 2? Okay, so u to the negative 1, and it would be divided by negative 1, or in this case, multiplication would work as well, plus my value c. So we'll clean this up a little bit. I can make the whole thing negative, and I can put the u back in the denominator. So this actually would be equivalent to having negative 1 over 4u plus c. Okay, it started out in the denominator, needs to end in the denominator. No negative exponents at the beginning, no negative exponents at the end. I don't have anything against negative exponents. We just want it to look in the same form it started in. That's all. And it also needs to be in values of x. And right now it's in u. So what do I need to do next? I need a substitute, right? u is 1 plus x to the fourth. If you leave it like that, I'm fine with that. Or on this one, it is, it's nice enough. If you'd like, you could multiply 3 with the 4. Also, either of those would be fine. Not really sure I'm convinced that the second one's any simpler than the first one, which is why I'm fine if you leave it in that first form. Question? Sure. What if you have two things that look like they're all inside? <laughs> I'm not sure that you're going to encounter anything with that, but we'll practice some. So if you do see something like that, you can ask when you see something that is causing trouble with the identification. Let's try another one. Um, trig. Some of you really like trig, and some of you aren't so fond of it. Um, so this one I've got 4x cubed sine of x to the fourth. I definitely don't have any parentheses. So far, all the ones I've done before had some parentheses present that help me identify an inside function. 
Where are the parentheses that sort of aren't drawn in on this? Yeah, there, there's really parentheses around this. In fact, most of your calculators force there to be parentheses when you try type a trig function. Like when you hit sign, it automatically puts in sign parentheses. And if you're, some calculators don't, but most of them do. So that is where the parentheses is. So what is my u value? x to the fourth. What is the derivative of that? It is 4x cubed. Okay, then. Uh, that's actually dx, rather. That's actually exactly the other piece that I have, right? So the part underlined in red gets replaced with du. And then this will be the integral of sine of u. So what's the antiderivative of sine u? Negative cosine of u plus c. Um, and then the u is actually the same as x to the fourth. <coughs> this section does, it forces you to do derivatives and integrals within the same problem. That's very true. So you have to be careful because the rules, of course, are, are exactly opposite of one another. So you do have to use some caution as you're working with antiderivatives and derivatives at the same time. All right. This one does not look like it actually has an inside versus an outside. We could change it so that it looks like that or looks like a product. What could I do to rewrite this in a perhaps more helpful way? Yeah, you could move the denominator into the numerator. When you do that, what happens? You get a cosine of negative Yeah, and so we can put the negative 3. I would put it on the outside just because it, it looks a little bit more like the, the form that we're used to looking at at this point. So what would the u be in this problem? Well, close. Just the cosine of x. So cosine of x would be my my value for u because that's what's inside of the power negative 3, right? So then what would du be? Negative sine of x dx, which is almost what I have. What's different? There's a negative. So I'm going to sort of multiply or divide, if you will, the negative to the other side. So my replacement really is the sine of x dx. So I end up getting a negative integral and a du at the end. What goes in between? U to the negative third. Right, u to the negative third. So you don't take the exponent until whenever you plug it back in? Well, here's the problem on this one. If you had done this, I would have messed up the derivative. The derivative wouldn't be what you want. So, and sometimes there is a little bit of trial and error. Like what piece actually is going to give me what I want? And so on this case, if you had tried it, you should have found, oh, this is a chain rule. I'm going to have to pull that negative third down. I'm going to have a negative fourth power, and it starts to look like something I didn't have in my problem. So that's why I wouldn't want that here. So if it gets too crazy, you know, you come to something. Right. The other piece of the product or the quotient that you were looking at should be found in your du part. What's the antiderivative? So I've got a negative here. What's the antiderivative of u to the negative third? Very good. U to the negative 2 over negative 2, and then C. plus C. Um, let me rewrite this first with you. So how will I rewrite this to look more like what I had? One over 2. Right, and it's going to be 1 because I've got two negatives here. You're right. So this is 1 over 2 u squared plus C. And then 1 over what? Cosine squared of x plus c. Um, I'm fine with you leaving it like this. It's quite possible if you looked at this, the back of the book might say this. Because that's the reciprocal of cosine. I, I don't care if you do that. I just want you to be aware that the back of the book might do that to it, right? Um, either one is fine. I mean, it started out with cosine, so it would be fine if it was left that way, but the book might change it in the back. 
All right, what is different about number five than the ones we've done so far? Well, it's got scary square root stuff going on, but there's something else. Yeah, it's actually a definite integral. I've got uh, upper and lower limits of integration. You guys see that okay? Um, there's two ways to handle that. I'm going to show you my favorite way to handle that, and then I'll show you the other option. It's not worse, it's just a little bit more complicated. Um, there are cases further on in calculus where it's helpful, um, but let me show you the way that's simplest first. Sound good? Okay. Um, so, <clears throat> first of all, um, it looks like we have an inside function versus an outside function. Do you see what looks like it's inside of something else? What's inside? One plus square yeah, 1 plus the square root of x. I mean, there's parentheses there and everything, and it's raised to a power, so that's the inside function. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do, just like on the last problems, we're going to find the derivative of that. That's exactly right. Derivative of 1 is 0. This x to the um, square root of x is x to the 1 half. So we can bring the 1 half down and make it a negative 1 half. Um, in terms of the way my problem is set up, I don't have a 1 half. So I'm going to multiply to the 2 to the other side. So this is 2 du. Um, and then the x to the negative 1 half is the same as 1 over the square root of x, right? And that's exactly what the other piece is. Here's the square root of x part in the denominator, and here's the dx. So those two pieces are the du. This is supposed to be a u. Not supposed to be a u, I said. Sorry. x. There we go. So the 1 over square root of x and the dx are going to be replaced by 2 du. Are we okay so far? The parts that I boxed in are exactly the same as this. Okay? So I'm going to replace this with a 2 at the beginning and the du at the end. I still have a 1 over because I, I didn't rewrite it yet. Um, but what would be 1 over what? U it is u squared. Now, I am going to, on purpose, leave off the 1 and the 9. On purpose. Okay? Because the 1 and the 9 <coughs> applied to the variable x. And I don't have an x in my problem right now. I've got a u. So I don't want the 1 and the 9 there because the 1 and the 9 have nothing to do, not nothing to do, but they aren't values for u. They're values for x, and x is not in my problem at the moment. So I'm just going to leave them off. Okay? Leave them off. Um, I do want to rewrite this, though, as u to the negative 2. So what is the antiderivative of u to the negative 2? Negative u to the negative 1. Yep. And if I would write a plus C, I'm not going to write a plus C here. I almost did. I'm not going to write a plus C here because I am going to evaluate this in a moment with the 9 and the 1, uh, just not yet. So, um, so this is actually the same as 2, negative 2 over u, right? So far, so good. But I want that in terms of x. So this is negative 2 over what? Yeah, and I'm going to write it as square root of x, um, in part because it started out that way, but also because I, I actually am going to evaluate this. I now have x's back in my problem, so I can evaluate with the values for x. And the values for x were 9 and 1. So now we're going to plug in the number 9. So this is negative 2 over 1 plus the square root of 9 minus negative 2 over 1 plus the square root of 1. So what's the square root of 9? Three. 3 plus the 1 on the bottom would be 4. So this is negative 2 over 4. I have two negatives here. So I'm going to get a positive 2 over 2. two. So this is the same as negative 1 half plus 1, which would be a grand total of 1 half. One half. So could you just originally, like, 
boiled out that square and then distributed the on the original problem? Um, on this one, you could have, but then you wouldn't have been able to find the antiderivative because you'd have addition and subtraction in a denominator. And you don't have any properties that tell you how to do, deal with addition and subtraction uh, in a denominator. Only addition and subtraction sort of on a baseline numerator value. So you would have run into problems. Substitution is the only option for this. Now let me tell you briefly what the other option is for doing this problem. Do you remember back at the beginning where I said don't write the numbers because I now turned it into U's? You guys know that, right? I left them off. <coughs> sort of like they're missing right here. <laughs> The other option is to actually find out what the values would be with u. So I could look at the number 9, for instance, and I could take my values over here where I said u is equal to 1 plus the square root of x, and I could say, okay, but if x is 9, what's u? It's 4, right? And I could have actually written in here that this is the number 4. And I could have done the same thing with the number 1, and I could have said, okay, if I have the number 1 for x, and I plug the number 1 into the u equals 1 plus the square root of x, what do I get for u? 2. And then what would happen is that I would have to remember, and this is the problem, that none of this would happen. I wouldn't turn anything back into x's. The part that, oh, that part. <laughs> Funny things with uh, Apple TV. Yeah. None of that would happen because I turned it into limits with the value u. That's actually nice. I mean, in general, that, that's a great step. It's helpful, and that, that's great. The problem is that then it becomes something that looks a little different than what we did before, and you have to remember, now I don't need to evaluate this with x's. I like doing it the other way simply because it looks just like the other steps that we did on the other problems without the limits of integration, and I just have that one extra step at the end. So it feels a little bit more natural to do it that way because we're already in the mindset of doing that. Let's try one more. This problem. I've got limits of integration 0 and pi. I've got the sine of x, and I have the cosine of 2x. Let me say first that this problem doesn't really look like a product, right? I mean, the other ones really looked like products or quotients. This one doesn't look like a product or a quotient, but it does have an inside function. What's inside of something else here? The 2x. The 2x. Now, the sine of x doesn't have an inside function, right? Because it's just, yeah, there's just a 1x in there. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to separate these, which is a property of integration that we have, and deal with them each one on their own. Because the first function does not have integration by parts. So I'm going to deal with that just like it is. What is the antiderivative of sine of x? Negative cosine. Negative cosine of x, which I can evaluate at pi and 0 just fine. I'm going to finish sort of the left-hand piece of this, and then we're going to come back to the right-hand piece. What is the um, evaluation? Well, we have negative cosine of pi minus the negative cosine of 0. So what is the cosine of pi? Negative 1 times the negative that's already there going to be right. So we're going to get 1 from this piece. Here I have minus the negative, so this is positive. And what's the cosine of 0? 1. So from this piece of the problem, I get 2. There isn't a u. I, I don't need it. I can evaluate this on the left-hand side. Okay? The stuff that's, that I've already done, there isn't a u. There's no inside of anything else. I don't need it. The reason that we're doing the u is when we need the u. Okay? The second piece has a u. It has an inside function. This piece is inside of something else. Agreed? Okay, so it's not a very exciting inside because what's the derivative of 2x? 
2 dx. And I don't actually even have a 2 in the problem, do I? But I can do the substitution and change this like I was doing on the other problems by dividing by 2. So this is 1 half du is going to replace the dx. So I'm going to have a 1 half and I'm going to have a dx, I'm sorry, d, du that replaced the dx. So the dx gets replaced by the 1 half and the du because they're equal. Cosine is still my problem, but now it's the cosine of u. All right, so we're going to follow this down. What is the antiderivative of cosine of u? Sine of u. Yeah, this one's sine. Um, notice when I wrote cosine of u, I did not write 0 and pi, correct? Because that applied to the variable x, and I'm using the variable u right now. So we're going to leave it off. Um, and then I would normally put a plus c, but I've got limits of integration that I am going to evaluate here in a moment, so I don't need the plus c. So this is 1 half sine of 2x, actually, correct? This u is 2x. And I'm evaluating then that as pi and at 0. So I have 1 half sine of 2 pi minus 1 half sine of 0. What is the sine of 2 pi? It's 0. What's the sine of 0? It's 0. So that actually doesn't give me anything new in my problem. My answer is actually just the 2 from the first part. All the work for 0. Okay, if I remember right, there is something in your homework that's a little bit unusual. So give me just a second. Yeah, we're going to do 21 together. It's a little bit odd, and I want to show you what happens when we have that. Yeah, this is fine. This is not a typical integration uh, with u substitution. No, it's not 21. Yeah, no, it is. It is 21. Yeah. Okay. And I think there's one more like this in your homework. Um, 18 will work like this one that I'm about to show you. I think 27 will as well. Okay, 18 and 27 at the very least. Okay, taking a look at this one, there definitely looks like there's an inside function. Agreed? But the inside function's derivative is what? Negative 1, and that is not what we have in the numerator, agreed? That's the reason this is weird, okay? Because on all the ones we've done so far, when we did the u, and, and the u is supposed to be the 3 minus x, I mean, that's the correct thing. The du is the other piece, and on this one it simply isn't. So we've got to figure out what we're going to do differently to make this work, because obviously this isn't just going to be a, a plug things back in and make things go away like the other ones, okay? So let's take a look at this one. <coughs> I've got the 9x squared on top, which is awkward. Um, and then I've got, oh, and let me write it the other way. We'll write the 9x squared, and we'll write the 3 minus x to the negative fourth dx. So it's perfectly fine that I can replace this piece with the u, and I've got u to the negative fourth. But the other piece does not directly look like the, neg the du part. So what do we do? Well, what we do is we go back over here. It's, it has to be all in terms of the same variable. I need them all to be used. If I turn it into use, everything's got to be used. Can't have use and x's both in there. Okay? So do you have an idea, Will? You said what's inside the parentheses equal to 9x squared and find it in terms of u. No, but you're getting close. we got to do something with that 9x squared. Let 
me actually do one more thing since I've got it. I need to get that negative to go away. So the negative will come in front. How do you know that you need to get that negative to go away? Because it's not in the problem already. I don't have a negative dx. I just have dx. So I'm going to, to move it to the other side. What I want, Chance, is I want this to look like something that's already in my problem. And right now it didn't. So if I divide by the negative 1, I've got dx in my problem. So then I can put the negative 1 out in front. I need to write 9x squared in terms of u. Is there a relationship somewhere on my screen between u and x? Yeah, the 3 minus x right up here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that relationship and we're going to solve that for x. That is, I want to know what does x equal. So what would I have to do? No, I've got u equals 3 minus x. Ah, all right, so... I'll subtract my 3. So u minus 3 equals negative x. So what's positive x going to be? Negative u plus 3. Or you can write it as 3 minus u if you'd like. So we're solving the equation that we set up for u equals, but for the other variable. That is, we want to figure out what does x equal. So instead of the 9x squared, I'm going to have 9 times 3 minus u squared. Now, you may, you may look at that. In fact, you probably should look at that and say, okay, um, but hang on. I need that 9. It sort of looks like we did a trade-off. Before I had 3 minus x that was raised to a power, now I've got 3 minus u that's raised to a power. Why, why was that helpful? Because it doesn't really look at first glance that that was a helpful thing to do. I mean, I still have something raised to a power. The difference is what kind of power it's raised to. What kind of power is it now raised to compared to what it was before? Compare those. Okay. It's a positive number, right? As opposed to a negative number? Do you guys see that? Why is that helpful? We can FOIL that. If it's a negative number, it's got to be in a denominator that's then FOILed. Are you guys with me? A moment ago, Will, you asked me a question about something where I had, um, let's say that this had been what we would have had. You had addition or subtraction in a denominator, and I said, that's not going to work. We can't deal with addition and subtraction in a denominator. Well, if we FOIL this out in the denominator, that's exactly what we would have. We'd have addition and subtraction in a denominator. I can't do an integration of this. This is not something you can do right now. But if the addition and subtraction had been in the numerator, that's no problem. So basically what we've done here is we've traded off the fact that I've got the addition or subtraction, in this case it was subtraction in a denominator, and now I don't have addition and subtraction in the denominator anymore. I have it in the numerator. And even if you don't prefer this, we could have left this uh, in the numerator denominator form and it might have been even maybe a little bit more evident that this was helpful. That is, I can write this now as 9 times 3 minus u squared over u to the fourth. And now you can see we do not have addition and subtraction in the denominator at all. Why does it matter? Well, because if I don't have addition and subtraction in the denominator, I can do division by the denominator very easily. You guys were doing it on the sideboards last time. You had problems that had this kind of feature to them. And so let me actually leave it written this way because I think it might be a little bit clearer as to why this is helpful. What is 3 minus u squared? 9 minus 6u plus u squared. Right. 
divided by e to the fourth. I can actually multiply 3 with the 9 here, so this is now 81 minus 54u plus 9u squared over u to the fourth. And a property of fractions says that I can split those into three separate fractions, all with the denominator u to the fourth. You guys did this last time on a couple of your examples, right? From your homework? I know you did because I saw some people on sideboards working on it in the last, cl in the last class. you up there at the top of the line. All right, so I can actually rewrite this. I've still got the negative out in front. As 81 divided by u to the fourth minus 54u divided by u to the fourth plus 9u squared divided by u to the fourth. That's possible. It's able to be divided that way. If we had left it in um, this form over here where I had the multiplication, the same thing would be true. I can distribute through a u, neg u to the negative fourth. It's a distribution property. That's able to be done. I can't distribute through u plus 3 to the negative fourth near so easily and actually be able to reduce or simplify anything. So here I end up getting... 81u to the negative fourth minus 54u to the negative third, right? Because I've got u divided by u to the fourth. And then 9u to the negative two. Everybody good? Because we can integrate that. Got a negative in front. What's the antiderivative of u to the negative fourth? Okay, so negative 3, right? And then divide by the negative 3. I'll simplify that with your, what you just said in a minute. Got my 54. u to the negative 3 becomes u to the negative 2 over negative 2. And then u to the negative 2 becomes u to the negative 1 over negative 1. We'll reduce, and we've got a lot of negatives going on here. Um, so the negative on the outside with the first piece makes the first piece positive. So 81 divided by 3 is 27 over u cubed. I've got two negatives, so that one becomes positive. The middle term has three negatives, because there's two there in the middle, the subtraction, the negative 2, and then there's one on the outside, so that's going to stay negative. 54 divided by 2 is 27. 27 over u squared. And then I've got one negative at the end plus the one at the beginning, so this becomes positive. Why did you say that that was staying at negative? Because there's three negatives. All three are circled. Oh, way out there at the front. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that negative at the front applies to everything inside. Uh, and then I have 9 over u. Is that okay? So at this point, we can put the u's back in as what they are with the x's because u is actually, what was it? 3 minus x. 3 minus x, thank you. Um, yeah, because we didn't have limits of integration on this one, so we do need a plus c, you're right. Put it here. Uh, you might see the back of the book combine these to have a common denominator. If they do and you want to check that out, that's fine. I'm, I'm okay if you leave it like this as well. You've done all the challenging work to get to here. If you want to leave that part there, that's fine. So this ability to take a look at this, the part that was the challenging part really on this one, is the ability to recognize that the inside function is still what you think it is. That addition and subtraction in the denominator. 
Or let's say, for instance, you had a square root. Addition and subtraction underneath a square root, that is not helpful. I can't do anything with addition and subtraction underneath a square root. So if I had something that looked like this, uh, and I'm trying to do an integral for this, I, I do want the u to be x plus 3. That's a very helpful thing. Because even though the du is only 1, I can take this and I can rewrite this as x equals u minus 3. And then this x out here has the addition and subtraction in it, whereas the x underneath here is not addition and subtraction anymore. And that is much more helpful because if I take a look at this, I can distribute a u to the 1 half to apply to each of those pieces. This would become u to the 1 half minus, I'm sorry, to the 3 halves, because I have 1 plus the 1 half minus 3u to the 1 half. I can integrate that, because the addition and subtraction is not underneath a radical anymore. So you see that happen at least two other times in your homework, so I want you to be aware of that when it's happening. You've got a u substitution, it just looks different than the other u substitutions we've done. Okay. If you yeah, that that is a good feature. Yeah, there are the there is the ability to change something so that you solve for x. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see like most of what you did towards the end. Um, did you go back to the beginning? Yeah. Yeah, so I let the u be the 3 minus the x. Um, but when I do that, I do the replacement, I still have a 9x squared that I've got to replace with something with u's in it. So in order to do that, I need to figure out what in the world is x so I can do the replacement. So I can solve my equation u equals 3 minus x for x. And then I can do the substitution in for the 9x squared. Yeah, I just switched the order. I just wrote it as 3 minus u instead of, yeah. You guys need some practice. So let's do some group work, okay? Um, 